So thinking back on this past week, it kind of feel like I uh, felt like I was going through a storm this week, you know, when being in this unprecedented time. And we had a lot of rain this week and there were storms, thunderstorms came through this week that were pretty powerful. And they kind of almost, I was thinking about how they almost, these storms kind of represent some of the things that we're going through in life, especially now, this unprecedented time for us as, as Christians and as non-Christians. And that's why I want to address Christians and non-Christians through this, because if you're in a storm, you, your faith, is, I believe, it starts to get tested after a while. And that's kind of maybe where we're at like down. There's a lot of people, I believe, that are very, um, they're scared. They're afraid of the unknown. What's going to happen? Am I going to lose my home? Am I going to lose my job? What am I going to do about my finances? How am I going to pay my bill? These are storms in life. Uh, it may be even a physical thing that they're going through and they can't pay for their doctor bills. These are, these are storms in life. And those storms will give you a lot of anxiety, a lot of fear. will give, will test who you are. But when we read the scripture this morning, the scripture we're going to be in this we're going to be in this morning is Mark, the Gospel of Mark. If you want to open your Bibles, if you have your Bibles right now in front of you and open open it to Mark chapter 6, 45 to 51. And it's a real for me, it's a power, those are power, these are powerful verses here, for especially the time we're in. That where where can we find this peace in the storm? in the storms of life in general, but especially right now. But with, we're into the seventh week of this, of, of this unknown that's even ahead for a lot of us. But even the day-to-day -day unknown, uh, you know, where is there going to be enough food in the grocery store? Are we going to be able to uh, go back to the same life we had before? Maybe not. But where are you going to find that peace? So let's read the scripture this morning together. And I think you'll see here that there's really the peace you'll get is peace from Jesus. So let's read this together. And you know, this is very um, well known. These are well known verses, but I think they're almost perfect for today. They're almost perfect for today. For today. So let's read chapter, uh, Mark chapter 6, 45 to 51. And here what we see is Jesus walking, walking on the water. So let's read it. Verse 45. Immediately he made his disciples get in the boat and go before him to the other side of Bethsaida while he sat, he sent the multitude away. And then, and when he had sent them away, he departed to the mountain to pray. We say he, that's Jesus. Now, when the evening came, the boat was in the middle of the sea. So they're out there in the middle of, of, of the sea here. And Jesus was on land. So the disciples are in this boat and Jesus is on land. Verse 48, then he saw them straining at rowing for the wind was against them. Now about a, on the fourth watch of the night, he came to them. Jesus comes from the, sea, from the land here, walking on the sea, walking on the water. Jesus walking on the water. We've heard that expression many times, right? He's walking on the sea. And would have passed them by, which is very interesting. Verse 49. And when they saw him walking on the sea, they supposed it was a ghost. They thought it was a ghost. And cried out. Verse 50. For they all saw him. They all saw him walking on the sea. They supposed it was a ghost. Cried out. For they all saw him and were troubled. But immediately he I love that word. Immediately, he talked with them and said to them, be of good cheer. All right, here's, here's, here, here it is right here from Jesus. It is I. Do not be afraid. Then he went up to the boat to them, and the wind ceased. Everything stopped. The storm stopped. And they were greatly amazed, greatly amazed in themselves beyond measure. And they marveled. Oh. Those are powerful, powerful words, right? Especially when you think about, and I, I don't know how many times, maybe you've cried out. Maybe you cried out when the winds were against you and the waves were coming in, going to overwhelm you. Maybe you've cried out. Maybe you haven't, maybe you haven't thought about where your walk is with Jesus, but he's right there because he, he hears their cry 
he hears their cry and he says, do not be afraid. It's me. It's me, Jesus. I'll help you out here. So let's pray before we get into the study. Father God, thank you, Lord, this morning for this time, this place, this hour that we can be with you. We can be with you and to be with you in word, in truth and spirit. And the powerful trio that is, Lord, that we can open our eyes and our ears to listen to what you will show us this morning about, especially, Lord, Lord, this time that we're in right now, where so many people are, are suffering with, with many different anxieties and fears and fears with no peace in their life. So, Lord, I ask you this morning to guide us through these scriptures to reveal to reveal any truths that you want us to know or anyone listening that they would hear something, Lord, that maybe would help them, uh, help them move to faith in you, in Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name, amen. So the, these scriptures, Mark 6, 45, 51, what you see here is that Jesus is the ultimate source of peace. Jesus is. Jesus is the ultimate source of peace. And what you also see is the fear that the disciples had. And like I said before, this kind of like parallels a little bit our lives and the time we're in right now. And though like we, we were never on the, the Sea of Galilee waiting for Jesus to come walking on the water during a storm, um, we we all get storms we do we get storms and you know what it's just not this time i can think back and i'm sure you can too where there's been many storms in your life this one here we're in right now is that i've never experienced a storm like this but there were times in my life where i went through storms and i didn't have jesus in my life which brought about a lot of anxiety a lot of fear um, a lot of trepidation but this time I know in my heart, Jesus will get us through this. He is our peace. So he says, do not be afraid. So when we go through these storms and we're going through the storm right now, we can count and you can, you can count on Jesus to come to your rescue because that's what it is. It is a rescue. Jesus can come to your rescue as he did for that, for the 12 disciples on the, on the water that night. Because when Jesus arrived at that boat, he addressed three areas of, of life that were a major concern for them. Okay. And as he did that, he was able to uh, replace their fear, right? Replace their fear with faith, with faith. So let's, let's look at this for, and as we go along here, take a few minutes here to maybe like dissect this a little bit these powerful words that come from the lips of Jesus in verse 50. What does it say? It says, for they all saw him and they were troubled, right? They thought they saw a ghost, but immediately as Jesus sees him, he knows, right? He knows they're afraid. He immediately, he talked, he says here, he talked with them and said to them, be of good cheer, lift up your head, be, be of good cheer. Do not be afraid. You see, this short statement, this short statement, we learn this. We learn this, and I'll call it a glorious truth, because it is. It's a glorious truth that Jesus is the, and he is the ultimate source, the ultimate source of peace for the believer, for the believer. And there's, there's no way around this. There's plenty, there's plenty of unknowns ahead for us. There are, right? There's plenty of unknowns ahead for us for every one of us, including non-believers. So it's good to know, this is good. It's good to know that the Lord Jesus already knows about them. Did you see Jesus already knows what we're gonna face, what, how we're gonna get through it and how he's gonna get us through it. Jesus already knows. You can put your faith in that. And he already knows about all that. And he's able to give us this peace that we need. We do need you the peace of Jesus. You can't, you can't conjure up your own peace within yourself because that's a natural this, uh, fight against the flesh and spirit. There's never peace. That's, how, that's always at the, that's a warring going on. There's no peace there, but Jesus can bring peace. So he has this desire, Jesus here, to 
in these times, these troubled times that they're in, that he these three areas that he that Jesus address that night, he addresses what? Number one, he addresses their fear. He addresses their fear. When Jesus said, be of good cheer, it was as it was as if he was saying to every one of us, every one of us, do not fear the storms of life. Do not fear the storms of life. That's Jesus saying it. I'm not saying it because I can't tell you that. And you say, well, Tom said, do not fear. Well, that's not, there's not, nothing, there's no worth to that. But if Jesus says, do not fear the storms of life, or do not be afraid. There's power in that. Do you grasp onto that? See, it's a lot easier to say than it is to do. It truly is, right? It is. It is. It's a lot easier to say than to do it, to not, to do not fear the storms of life. Because it's just a natural instinct, instinct for us to worry and have anxiety, unfortunately. So Jesus looks at, look at verse 48 and 51. Here's what happens. The storms that they're in and the storms that we're in right now and the storms that we're going to be in, they're under his control. They're under his control. Verse 48, then he saw them straining at rowing for the wind was against them. Now about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea and would have passed them by. See here with the context of that is they're terrified. They're terrified. It says in verse 51, then he went up to the boat to them and the wind ceased. It just stopped. As soon as Jesus came on the scene, it all stopped. The wind stopped. Jesus is in control. And they were greatly amazed in themselves beyond measure and marvel. They were just blown. You know what? They were blown away that Jesus comes on the scene and peace comes upon the sea. And also, when and so Jesus says, do not be afraid in their hearts. See, they're struggling, just like we struggle. They're struggling and they're afraid that they're going to they're going to die. Have you ever been in that position where you felt like you were going to die? It's a tough position to be in. It really is. There is a lot of different things that go on when you when you fear a point where you're leaving this earth, especially if you don't have you're not in a walk with Jesus, if you're a non-believer. I ask you, if you're a non-believer right now, listen to these words. Because if you leave this earth right now as a non-believer, you'll never have peace. You'll be you'll be in hell for eternity, separated from God, separated all the people that you know that know Jesus, your friends, your family. So so they're struggling here, and they're afraid that they're going to die. But Jesus, however, does this. He he uses the very thing, fear they fear. As a means to come to them he what's he do he demonstrates kind of his control over their situation jesus is in control of every situation whether you believe that or not it, he is jesus god is in control he's in that control of that situation by by walking jesus is walking on the water by jesus is walking on the water and later calming the storm see there are times there are times in life where, where your life sometimes appears out of control. Has that ever happened to you? Where your life feels kind of like it's out of control? In different ways. It's all different for each one of us. But I have to remind you, when you feel like that, when your life's out of control, I have to remind, I want to remind you and remind myself that God's in this room, in this room with me right now. God's with you right now. He is. God is with you right now. And Jesus is still in control of your life. Here's what it says. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. That's Psalm 37, 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. He's, Jesus, he's still walking on the waves of, uh, if you will, of, of a stormy life. Jesus is, you know what? Jesus is walking on the, on the water right now. Do you see him coming towards you? Jesus is walking on the waves of the stormy life that we have, and he has the power, he has the power, the ultimate power, to calm those waves at his will. At his will, just like that. So he's absolutely, he's absolutely worthy, because he is. Jesus is absolutely worthy of our trust, because that's what it is. 
Do you trust him? Do you believe who he is and what he's done and what he's going to do? Do you believe? Do you trust? Do you have that trust and faith? He's in control. He's in control. Look at verse 45. And, and by the way, if, you, if you've if never had a storm, you're going to have one. Because storms are part of the plan. They are. They're just part of the plan for our lives. Verse 45 says, immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, to Bethsaida, while he sent the multitudes away. See, the disciples were out of, um, they're out there in their boat in the middle of that storm, simply because they were in the will of God. God already knew he sent them out there. So they're in the will of God. So everything's going to be all right. It's just a matter of them believing. And they're in the storm because Jesus sent them there. Jesus sent them there. Sometimes you're going through a storm. If that storm's going to have a purpose because God is doing something in your life to show you something, teach you something, make you stronger, build your faith, heal you. Jesus is in the middle of these storms. See, the truth is these storms are to be expected. They are. and But, but not to be feared. Don't have any fear today of what's going on. Don't cast that fear aside. Jesus is in the boat with you, actually. See, those storms, they've been sent to help us grow. And grow where? Grow into the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. For a light affliction, which is but a moment, is working for us far more exceeding the eternal weight of glory. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. See, there are two things to remember during any time, any stormy time in your life. See, the, that, number one, that God, God knows where you are, where we are, and what we're facing. But he knows the way that I take when he has tested me. There it is. I shall come forth as gold. That testing, what you're going through right now, you're being refined going through this, this storm right now, what we're going through. We may not might not see that right away, but we are. We'll come through this, even this, this pandemic. We'll come through this on the other side of it. I believe in my heart and I pray that will be changed in some way, somehow. Each one of us differently, of course. By the way, that scripture I read was in Job chapter 23, 10. And number two, God allows what he does for our good. For his glory. It's always about God's glory, isn't it? It has to be. Romans 8, 28 says, as we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God, to those who are called according to, to his purpose. God has a purpose through the storms, through the non-storms. God has a purpose for our lives. That all things will work together for the good to those who love God. Look at verse 51. I think this is the most important one. One of I'll say one of the most important ones here in verse 51. Because each storm that we're going through, and even this one, has a duration. Each storm has a duration. You know, I'm sure I always think back growing up, going through different things as a kid. And my mom used to always say, this too shall pass. Well, that's exactly what's going on here. That, that the storms that we're in right now, they're good. It, it's going to have a duration to it. Look what it says in verse 51. Then he went up to the boat to them and the wind ceased. Stopped. And they were greatly amazed in themselves. And, they, and beyond measure and marveled. You see, I, I bet you anyone anyway, here, the disciples thought they were done. They were. They thought they were. They thought they were kaput. <laughs> lack of better terms. It probably. It probably appeared to them in a way which probably happens. Happens happened to you. It probably appeared to them that the storm wasn't going to end. I, I think we've all probably been through that. When's this going to end? I feel like I've been going through this for a long, long time. They probably think that this is not going to end before they before they perish, before they before they die. But when Jesus came on the scene, he was able to show that they that there 
He is always to end the storm. Jesus will end the storm. Jesus will end this pandemic. I don't know when. I don't know what good will come out of it, but there will. There will be because Romans 8, 28 says that, right? For us who love God, when we go through this storm, there's something good going to come out of it, whether it's individually as a church, as the churches, uh, hopefully as a calling to other people that are not followers of Jesus, that they will be drawn to him through this. I, I would say this, I'll remind you guys of this, that Jesus knows, he does, he knows what you're facing. He knows what I'm facing. He knows what each one of us are facing, and he knows what you're able to take, right? Each one of us has a, a limit, right, of how much we can take, right? And Jesus knows that limit. Jesus knows that point, but he's going to bring us to that point for, for good, for refining. Jesus will not allow, Jesus will not allow you to be tested and that's why I say when this ends, we'll see what comes out of it. He will not allow you to be tested above the limits of what you can endure. What you can endure. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, no temptation has overtaken you except as common to man, but God is faithful. Who will not allow you, God will not allow you, put you, put you in there, right? Whatever your name is. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. This is the scriptures, 1 Corinthians, Paul's writing this, but with temptation will also make the way of escape. Will make the way of escape that you will be able to bear it. You're gonna bear this, we're all gonna bear this. And I don't know what each one of you are going through, especially in these last seven weeks, what you've had to deal with, but, but the Lord God, Jesus, He'll make way of escape. He will. The Lord, it says, not, not me. that's not me, Tom, saying that. It's the scriptures. But why? Because that you may be able to bear it. That you can be a bear and made stronger. I really believe you've made stronger in your weakness. So you never forget that this storm that we're in today, or any of you guys are in some type of storm, that you might face even tomorrow. Maybe something's coming up tomorrow, but maybe it's a, a, you have to go to the doctor or it's a financial thing or a relational storm. Um, it didn't come to stay. It's not here to stay, but they all come to pass. Rest in that, have peace in that. You're a follower of Jesus. He'll take you through this. So kind of we looking at this, we're looking at some pretty, I guess you could call them significant reasons that for not fearing, right? So when you think about us, it, it would do well for us to speak um, for, for maybe a second here about some of the things we find ourselves fearing. You know, and, I, and, and you know this, fear takes um, a lot of different shapes. It does, it's different shapes in, for every person that's listening, including myself. And some, like some fear old age. Sometimes I think about that, but I know where I'm going though. Sometimes you feel, some of us are maybe fearing old age or some fear a disease that they might have. I can relate to both of those, by the way. And I've had fear through both of that, to, to those two things, especially the disease part. Some fear dying and some fear having nothing, being in poverty. And you know what? All those things are relative. Those things are all relative to the physical being of who we are. So that whatever, however, any way you want to attach all that, here's the fact that remains, that we're all afflicted from time to time by fear. We are, right? Would you agree? I think you would. From time to time, we're all afflicted by fear. So in all really, I think in the end, in, in all the honesty that I can put forth, uh, I'd have to admit that most of the time, I believe this, that our fears, sometimes, I think most of the time, 
don't materialize. Have you ever gone through that where you've taken uh, a thing, an anxiety or a situation that you're in, and you just maybe just kept conjuring up and it, drew, it, it gave you more fear, more anxiety and say, no, this is not going to happen. How am I going to do this? And that situation never even materialized. And you put yourself through all that. That's happened. That's ha that, that does happen. The situation never even materializes. So we worry, and Jesus tells us not to worry, doesn't he? he we worry about the things that never, that never come to pass in our lives. We do. That's, that's exactly what I'm saying here. We worry about things that never even come to pass sometimes. That's a lot of wasted effort and energy. So instead of worrying, how about this? We have to learn to trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord this morning. Trust in the Lord Jesus during this time, this stormy time of, of our lives. That's where we are right now. We're in a stormy. Hey, the thing is, we're all, guess what? Just like the disciples, we're all in this, this stormy time to, together, aren't we? We're not alone. We're all together. So here, the second part now is that here's what Jesus does. Right? He dressed their fear. Now he dresses their faith. He dresses their faith. So Jesus comes to the disciples, right, walking on the water. And they thought he was a ghost, right? And they cried out in fear. But when Jesus spoke to them, when he opened his mouth, he addressed their fears. He gave them a reason. He gave them a reason to believe that help had arrived. Help had arrived. He gave them a reason. And when Jesus got there, he quickly identified himself unto the disciples, right? He did. He said, it is I. He identified himself. They knew who he was, right? They're his followers. He says, it is I. He, that's like a, a statement of identification. Like each one of us can say, hey, it's me. And you talk to your family and they know who, who you are. It's the same thing here. Jesus says, it is I. They knew who he was. It's, just, it's like almost like Jesus is saying, uh, hey, guys, hey, don't be afraid of what you're facing here. Uh, after all, the I, I am is here. The I am is with him. The God, God, Jesus. And Jesus as I am, think about this. He's all powerful. Jesus is all powerful over all the things of this world in control. In Luke chapter 137, it says, for with God, nothing will be impossible. In Job 42, 2, it says, I know that you can do everything and that no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. In Ephesians 3, chapter tw uh, in Ephesians 3, verse 20, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. That power is the Holy Spirit. Just remember this, that his power was revealed right in the beginning, right in the beginning, right in creation, in Genesis. Read Genesis. You want to read about power? Read Genesis, chapter 1 and 2. Remember this, that all these things around us, and sometimes there's miracles that happen, right? And they, that we saw miracles in the deliverance of, of Israel. And, and you can read about that in, the, uh, chap in Exodus chapter 3 through 15. We saw that deliverance through all of that, what they went through from uh, all the different being on the Pharaoh and then going through the Red Sea, parting of the sea, and then through going through the wanderings of the desert. Just that Jesus got them. God got them through. God, God will take us through sometimes in the wildest things that we could even think of. But here's the thing. I'm just telling you about Genesis and Exodus. Jesus hasn't changed. God hasn't changed. He's still the same God of Genesis, the same God of Exodus, as he is the same God of this scenario we're in. Our, 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 our world, if you will. He's still the God and he's still almighty. He's still the almighty. Amen? And maybe, maybe you might have a mountain that has to be moved right now. Maybe you have a mountain that might has to be moved, has to be moved, has to be pushed aside or climb or, or get over. He's the only one. Believe this in your heart. He's the only one 
who's really qualified to get that job done. Because when you push everything away, you might think you're really smart and you can figure things out and, you know, you could put uh, all your talents to, to work and you fail. And you fail. It happens. Oh, I got this done. I got this down. Uh, no problem. And it winds up being a terrible mess. If you have a mountain that needs to be moved right now, Jesus is the only one that can get the job done. Get the job done. And that, and this power, because it is a power, you have to really believe this. This is a power that what, what we are talking about here is, um, look, look at in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 12. Look what it says. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand? Measured heaven with a span and calculated the dust of the earth in a measure. Weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in balance. This verse kind of almost kind of reminds me that God is able to to spread, just spread. If he opened up his finger and said, cover all the stars, cover everything in heaven, I am. It could mean that he's done, he's placed this whole universe, this whole creation with just maybe the flick of his finger. That's how powerful he is. That's how powerful everything above you. Look beyond there. All of creation. Look around us. God created all that. And if he has that power, if God has that power, if Jesus has that power over everything around us, imagine this. Imagine what kind of power he would, I'll say this, unleash on behalf of us, his children. Because that's what he wants to do. Right? He's given us the victory, victory already. We should walk in that. Do not fear, fear, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom, to give you the kingdom. That's Luke chapter 12, verse 32. See, you can trust him. He has the power to help. He has the power to help. There's never been a time when God did not exist. There's never been a time when God's not existed. And there'll never be a time when he will not exist. Never. It's the great I am. All the times that ever were and ever will be going forward are right now to God. They're in the moment. We're in the moment of God right now. We are. We're in we're in his hands right now. In this time. In these maybe these storms you're going through. God is it's sometimes hard to grasp, but it is. That God is existing at all times. Past, present, and future. Can you grasp that? Sometimes it's difficult. It is, right? He's able to be present at all places at once, omnipresence. And he's promised this. Listen, he's promised this, that every follower, every child, if you will, of God, that he will be with them at all times. That he will, he will be with them at all times. In all places, wherever you are, and all the difficulties of your life, God is with you. Teaching, you know what it says in Matthew 28, 20, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. In Hebrews 13, 5, it says, let your conduct be without covetedness. Be content with such things as you have, for he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Those are the words of the Bible. That's in the scripture, Hebrews, Matthew. He'll never leave or forsake you. He's with you even to the end of the age, to your last breath. Hold on to that, grasp on to that. You'll get through this, we'll get through this. Because when the Lord says that he will not forsake us, it really literally means this, that he won't, God will never run out on you. Jesus will never run out on you. He'll never run out on us, you know, especially when the chips are down, especially when you're in the deepest, darkest pit. Jesus, you know, which he'll never run out on you. You may feel sometimes like, hey, Lord, where are you? He's there with you. We call out to him, cry out to him. Ask him for his wisdom, his guidance. Ask him for a faith that will get you out of that pit, that he will lift you up and pull you out of that pit.
God's not a fair weather friend. Have you ever had any of those? A fair weather friend? They're just hanging around you because maybe you're going through a good time. Maybe you're showing them a good time that you're like, hey, look, look, this guy's all right. And then you hang around them. Things go bad. They're gone. Those are fair weather friends. He's God, Jesus. He's he's an all weather friend. He's through everything. Right? All weather. All storms. All through the seasons. Right? Spring. Fall. Winter. Summer, God is with us through all that. In Psalm 46, 1, it says, God is our refuge and strength. Amen. A very present help in trouble. Psalm 145, 18, the Lord is nigh unto all them that, here it is, call upon him. There's an action here. Call upon the Lord. To all that call upon him in truth. That all call upon him in truth. And that's known in the scriptures, and that's known in the Bible. And God is, what this tells me, that God is all perceiving. That God is Jesus, he's all perceiving. He knows everything. He, it's by virtue of that fact, it's a virtue of this, this fact, that Jesus is God. Jesus is God. He's the one who knows all things. Nothing really escapes him. Nothing escapes him. And Jesus is always looking and pondering. I'll use that word pondering uh, the ways of men, the way we walk, the way we talk, our action with the with the world. Look what it says in Proverbs 15, 3. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13, neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him. Jesus sees everything. God sees everything. God sees everything in your life. You can't hide anything. You can't brush it aside and say, ah, he, uh, he's not too, uh, God won't bother me over this. It says to open the eyes of him who we have to do. You see, when, think about Job. When Job considered how the knowledge of God, he said that, this is what he says in Job 23.10, he knoweth the way that I take, right? God knoweth, he says, Job says, I knoweth the way that I take. And when I'm tried, when he goes through this, this trial, which we all know, Job, when I first read that book, I was like, wow, I would never be able to get through this. He says, when I'm tired, I'll, sh here it is. Remember we talked about coming forth, uh, it's going through a trial and being refined. What happens when you're refined? Here's what Job says. I shall come forth as gold. Come forth as gold. You believe that? Do you believe you're going to come through this? You come forth as gold. Boy, I, I don't think we could ever go through a lot of stuff that Job through, that Job went through. And so what, what this means for every one of us that follow Jesus, that are, um, love the Lord, is simply this, that God is what? He's worthy. God is worthy of what, again, our trust. Worthy of our trust. Because God knows exactly what we are facing second by second, minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day, month by month, as we go through this life. He does grasp onto that because he hasn't missed a thing that has happened to you. Do you believe that? God has missed a thing that has happened to you. You may think that sometimes, well, God doesn't, he's not paying attention to me. Oh yes, he is. Oh yes, he is. He's paying attention to you in a way you might not even be able to grasp. Sometimes I can't even grasp it. He knows this is the best part. He knows and he understands. He knows and he understands and he's able to help you, to help me, to help our family, to help people that are lost right now. He's able to help in the time of need, in the time of need. He hasn't missed a thing. And you can trust him. You can trust him. You can trust him. Jesus knows your steps. He knows your steps. He knows my steps. So we have this idea here, wherever we are, whatever we're involved in, I pray this, that we're involved in these things for him, for the Lord. And whatever battle, whatever battle that, that we're going to be fighting, because we are going to be fighting, 
And it's a spiritual battle because you know this. It's always a spiritual enemy against your flesh. You know, it's a flesh and spirit. It's always a flesh and spirit. That's, 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 that is right in line with the scriptures. But we have, this is what we, we, we can know that when we're going through this, that we can have the confidence. And it is, it has to be a confidence. You know, some say it's faith. Yeah, but there's a confidence you have to have in your faith that the Lord of all creation is with you, with us. He's still the great I am. Amen. He's still the great I am. And he declares his character. Now, Debbie was going through a Bible study and she's talking about Jehovah Shema. And here's the veil. It kind of, kind of gave me something to think about. And there's some meanings for the us as the children of God, of who God is, the Jehovah Jehovah, right? There's Jehovah Jireh. What does Jehovah Jireh mean? The Lord is there. There's the Jehovah Rohi. That's the Lord is our shepherd. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord of peace. What we're talking about this morning, the peace of Jesus. Jehovah Rophi, the Lord, our healer. God is a healer. Jehovah Sedeku, the Lord, our righteousness. God is our righteousness. Everything that's righteous about you is not you. It's the righteousness of Jesus, the Holy Spirit in you. Jehovah Shema. Jehovah Shema. The Lord is there. Jesus is with you. Jesus is right with you this moment, this hour, this time, wherever you are. He's with you. Jehovah Shema. He's there. Remember, he never leaves or forsakes. Then you have Jehovah Nissi. The Lord, our banner. We can declare who he is. He's our Lord. We can be, you know what? I'm not saying we can be proud of who we are in Christ, but we sure can have a, a, a gloriousness in us that shows other people who we are in Christ. And then you have Jehovah Helion, the Lord Most High. There is no other God. This is the God who's the Most High. He's El Shaddai. He's El Shaddai. He's Adonai. He's the Alpha, the Omega. He's what God is what he needs to be all the time. All the time. I hope this is strengthening you this morning and giving you a hope and some peace. And this list, you know, this list can go, it can go on and on, but to say that God is all you'll ever need, regardless of where you find yourself or wh whatever may come your way, just, re re just rest in this, rest in this, that he is, I am. He is, I am. And we know these I am's because even Jesus has stated who he is. In John 6, 35, he says, I am the bread of life. In John 8, 12, he says, I am the light of the world. In John 10, 9, he says, I am the door. In John 10, 11, he says, I am the good shepherd. In John 11, 25, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. These are the great I am's. I am the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 6, I am the true vine. John 15, 1. So we went through these two things. Here's a final one here. He addressed their future now. Jesus addresses their future, and we have a future with the Lord in heaven, don't we? To be with him. Because they were preparing to die. They were, they, they, right? They thought they, that was the end. Here, this is the end of, this is the end for us. Yeah, when, when Jesus came, though, he let them know this, that he had a plan. He has a plan for them. He had a plan for their future. And you see in verse 45, uh, as he gets in the boat, he, he, he told them to get on the boat and go to the other side. Just go. Jesus gives him a command. Sometimes when Jesus tells you something, you got to listen. You always got to listen. And he tells him to go to the other side. And he knew that they, that they were kind of um, responsible for where they were. They, they rode themselves out there. Jesus, you know, they rode themselves out there. And uh, he had a plan for them when they reached the other side. Jesus had a plan for them. He says, be not afraid. I mean, we know what that means, be not afraid. It means literally to stop fearing now and never fear anything else ever again. Never fear anything else ever again. So sometimes I know for us is where we're at and we think as sometimes we think with our own thoughts that we look at it from a perspective that the future looks kind of bleak. 
right now, doesn't it? Are we ever going to go back to what we were? Are we, are we going to live the same lives again? That seems kind of bleak. And some people, there's people, there's a lot of people that have lost a lot of hope. A lot of hope. When we look at the future, we think about, and I know I always thought about these things that, you know, will I ever get rid of the disease I have? Will that ever, will it overtake me? I, I do think of these things. Will, it, will our families, will our families survive all this, the pressures of all this? Will, you know, will all the ones that we love, our loved ones, will they be okay through all this? Do we have enough provision for the future? We're talking about that. We're talking about the job, provision, the house, um, a way to provide food for our families. But we got to learn this and understand this and keep this close to heart, that the future is in God's hands. The future is in God's hands and give ourselves over. I'm going to use this term. Give ourselves over to absolute faith. Absolute faith. Because as we face this future, or as we go forward now, there's three truths here that give us hope. That God is trustworthy. That's number one. So regardless of where this is all leading us as we go down this path here, we can certainly do this. We can um, we, sh we can know that God, we always said this before, we said this before, he'll never leave us and walk with us no matter what comes. And you can trust in that. You can have that absolute faith about that. And he knows how to take care of us and how to see us through these things. So no matter what's, what happens here, what's calling, maybe God's calling us to something right now uh, as a Christian, and maybe even you don't know it right now, but God as a non-Christian is calling you, but you don't see it. You don't, it's not, you're not being drawn to him yet, but I say this, open your heart right now. If you're not a Christian right now, open your heart. Because you might be in a position right now where you, you totally think it's all over, game over. Not for the Lord, it's not. Not for Jesus, it's not. You just see it the, with his disciples here. Because God can be trusted. And, right, he's faithful, he's trustworthy, and he's, here's the thing, God's always available. God's always available. And his disciples, the lesson that they learned, that was really kind of the lesson that they learned that night on the Sea of Galilee, that God is available. The lesson is this, never count God out. Never, never count God out. You may think, you may think that he's not around and he doesn't care, but really in truth, in truth, really what, that he'll never leave you and forsake you. He will be at your side. He's right there at your side right now. He's always available, always avail available for us. So no matter what you're facing right now, no matter how this journey ends up for us, God is always there and he's always seeking this, your best interests, your best interests. You may not think so sometimes. Hey, God, why you put me through this? There's entry. God has more than what you know because he has his best interest for you in mind. It says, thou shalt, then shalt thou call and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry and he shall say, here I am. If thou take away from the midst of the yoke, the putting forth of the finger and speaking vanity. See, there may be a few things here that you can truly count. There's some, there's some things that you can truly count on in life, but Jesus is one that you can, and, and circle this word, always, that you write that word down. Jesus is always there to, to depend, that you can depend on him. Jesus is always there. Even when you feel like he's run, that you're all alone. That's you thinking that. God is saying, cry out to me. I'm here. I'm listening. Tell me. Talk to me. We have a relationship, don't we? Don't we have a relationship? So, gosh, you know, I think about this. God is ever enough. God is ever enough, right? He's faith. He's trustworthy. He's available. And he's ever enough. God is enough. As we already said, the situation that can come that we have no control of. And a lot of this here right now, what we're going through, we have really no control of it. We're under the control of what the government's telling us to do and, and how to do it, thinking that they have the best interests of mind for us, but let's pray about that. But there's going to be rough times ahead. There is. There's, I, I do. I, I, there really is. This isn't going to be a kumbaya ending. It really isn't. 
I don't know things will go back, things will kind of, but things are going to be different. And things might even be different, and I pray not. Things might be, and there might be rough times ahead for the church. There might be rough times ahead for the church. For us, too, as God's people, right? It could be. It could be our persecution gets worse and worse as we go forward. You know, there's, we certainly know right now there's kind of an economic crisis around us. And, and you look at our political system, our political, it's just political upheaval all over the place. I just leave that over to the Lord. But through it all, we have to know this, through all those things, that God is enough. God is enough. Because he's all that we'll ever need. He's all that we'll ever need in this life, in the things that arise in this life. And sometimes, don't you ever feel this way? Sometimes things arise in your life every day. You say, wow, God, Lord, give me a break here. In Isaiah 45, 22, it says this, look unto me, look unto me and ye be saved all the ends of the earth for I am God and there is none else. See, God and God alone here is is our hope, our help as we get through this life. He's all powerful. I know these things are getting repeated over and over again, but they have to be written on your heart to strengthen you, encourage you, to give you your your faith, something, even if it's a mustard seed to hang on to, because he's all powerful, God. He's all present. He's all perceiving. We heard all these things. We read these things this morning. If he isn't enough, if God isn't enough, then we have then we have no hope. Then we have no hope at all. He's enough. He's enough spiritually also. In Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25, it says, He also, he's also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. Look, listen, non-believer out there, God is waiting for you. God's waiting for you to be drawn to him. You may not think, you think, oh, I can't do that. Yes, you can. Open up, just open up your heart. Open up your heart and maybe let this thing here, your brain kind of shut off and let kind of reflect on a lot of things of who you are, what you've been through, what you're going through and what's maybe lying ahead for you. And maybe you can't fix it. Maybe you're in a terrible situation, but you know what? God makes intercession. He does, but you got to call out to him. You got to cry out to him. He's able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, through God, through Jesus. That's me. That's you. The non-believer. I'm telling you, listen. It is, it is vital, especially the time we're in. Things can change in a second in this world. In Acts 4.12, it says, Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. There is no other name than the name of Jesus. Amen. And even financially, think about this financially. In Philippians 4.19, he says, And my God shall supply all your needs. According to his riches by the glory in Jesus Christ. If you're suffering right now, going through different things financially, you know what? I've been through that. I've been through that a couple of times in my life. And you know what? God got us through. You know, so I sometimes I was on a just on, on like I said before, a mustard seed of faith, but God got us through. God did provide. And sometimes you now physically, you might be going through something physically like right now. Matthew 6 33 says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. You know, seek first God. God first above everything, and everything else will fall into place. It will. And sometimes even think about this emotionally. See, I kind of get emotional sometimes about things, and sometimes that emotion kind of messes me up. But God says in Isaiah 26, 3, he says, you will keep him in perfect peace. So through that emotional craziness sometimes, I have to turn to the Lord to give me peace. I can't bring that peace upon myself. I can't automatically say, Oh, quit being, you know, emotional. You'll be okay. It has to be the Lord intervening for me. It does. And then eternally, as we come to a close here, in Revelation 21, chapter 1, verse 7, I was talking with Debbie about this this morning. The eternal life that awaits us, that here's what it says in Revelation 21, 1 through 7. Now listen. I saw a heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth have passed away. Also, there's no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, 
New Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people. And God will wipe away. Listen, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no sorrow, no crying. There shall be no more pain. The former things have passed away. That's where, that's where we're headed. No more sorrow, no more tears, no more pain, because the former things of this life are gone. We're with the Lord forever, eternally. So as we end here, I would think and hope that through the scriptures this morning, there was something that maybe touched you in a way where maybe you haven't been thinking about for a while. Maybe you haven't really, maybe you haven't really been in the peace of Jesus. Maybe you've been in the peace of your own self or trying to have peace in your own self. It's not going to work. Maybe the struggles of the things that we're going through right now are overwhelming you. The waves that all of a sudden came on the disciples. But I would ask you this. If that's the case, look up. Look up. Because Jesus is there. If you're going through something right now, look up. Jesus is there. He's with you. He's the peace. Right? No Jesus, no peace. So for those who are listening, hopefully there's maybe someone who's listening right now that's never heard about this Jesus, this peace of Jesus, that he brings peace to life. And all the other different things we talked about this morning, that, that are things that we have really, we think we have grasp of all these things. And maybe you think you have grasp of all these things in your life and that you're in control. Or maybe your life's out of control right now. It kind of, is, it doesn't matter because without Jesus, nothing's going to, in the end, there will be no peace in your life. You'll be separated from God. You'll be separated for eternity from God. Think about that for one second. This life is just a vapor. This life is just a vapor. We're here, we're gone. But there's another place for the believer to go. And that's into the, I'd say, the loving arms of Jesus Christ. And I'll ask you this morning, if you, this is the first time maybe you heard about Jesus, or maybe you've heard it over and over again, and you just kind of shrug it off and say, yeah, 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 I, I, I don't know. I, I, this stuff seems all like, you know, fantasy to me. And there's some people that think that way. Oh, truly, I tell you, it's not fantasy. It is not fantasy. It's the way, the truth, and the life. That's what the scriptures say. That's what Jesus is, the way, the truth, and the life. And if you want to have a relationship with Jesus this morning, because that's what it is. It's a relationship. It's not, and I say this every week, because I was brought up in religion. And that religion, I have to say this, did nothing for me. It, it made me feel guilty about everything. <laughs> it made me feel guilty about who Jesus was in my life. That I could never, never measure up. Because I have to go through all these different various, I'll say jumping through hoops. That's not who Jesus is. That's not the relationship that Jesus wants. Jesus wants a personal relationship with you. Jesus wants to know you on that level. You, 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 I mean, think about your personal relationships you're in right now. Think of someone who you love so dearly that you would do anything for, that you would uh, even die for. Because that's what Jesus has done for us. Jesus has died for us, for, died for you, even the non-believer. Because it says he came for all. So that's giving you hope right now. And I want you to think about this. Think about all the things that are going on in your life. And maybe you're just at the end of your rope here. Maybe you're not. Maybe you've got everything going on good. But really, that's kind of, you know what? I've been through all that. Things are going good. And you got everything going. Yeah, ultimately, really, that's a shallow way of living. It is. I'm not saying that in a negative way that you can't live comfortably and have a good life. You work hard. No, those are good things. But sometimes when you really think about that, you are, those are all the distractions that keep you away from God. Those are all the distractions that keep you away from God. So look, I'd ask you this. If you're not a follower of Jesus Christ this morning, and if you maybe are at a point where you got nothing else, there's nothing else, game over. 
Or maybe you just have an empty, just going through the motions and nothing's fulfilling in your life. I'm going to ask you to do this. I'd ask you to think about this personal relationship with Jesus. And you know, he listens. The great thing about our Lord is that you can have, I can have a conversation. There's no other God like this, by the way, that I can have a conversation with the Lord, with Jesus, anytime, any place, anywhere, at any hour, at any minute. And he's there. Right? We read that this morning. We talked about this morning. Isn't that awesome that you can talk to, and you, you don't have to be, you don't have to talk religious to God. You talk to God from your heart. That's what he wants. That's what he wants to know. And God will listen and God will give you the strength and the power to get you through this thing. If you want to have that relationship with God, I ask you, pray this, pray this with me. Pray this with me. Dear Lord, I know I'm a sinner because that's what we are. We're all sinners. We all were sinners. Until Jesus went to the cross and he shed his blood for us. And that when we came to know him, those sins are forever washed away. That's the amazing thing about that. Every sin, past, present, and future is washed away by the blood of Christ. Washed away by the blood of Christ. Even you, sinner, non-believer, that you come to the Lord this morning in this prayer and say, I know I'm a sinner. Repeat that to yourself. I know I'm a sinner. I ask for forgiveness because that's what it's about, forgiveness. It's always about forgiveness. I believe that you look, say this, I believe that you died. Because that's what Jesus did. He went to the cross and he died for you, for me, for all of us, for our sins. And then what happened? On Resurrection Sunday, he rose from the dead. Hallelujah, what a glorious day. Two weeks ago, we just went through that, right? Our, our celebration of the grandest time of, as a Christian on Resurrection Sunday. And here's another thing. I ask you, ask the Lord, you know what? Tell the Lord, I want to turn away from my sin, Lord. It's called repentance. It's called repentance. There has to be repentance. You have to turn away from the life you're living right now because we're all living in sin. We're all living in, you know, there is sin that comes upon even the Christian and we have to turn away even now as we have relationship. We've got to constantly be convicted through the Holy Spirit to turn away from that sin. Because God cannot be with us if we're in sin. It's just not possible. Ask God to help you turn from your sins in your life right now. The things that are maybe dragging you down into the deepest pit right now. That you think that you're just not even worthy to even ask that. No, God is saying, come to me. Turn away from your sins. I'm your Lord. I'm your God. And here's, here's what I'm going to ask you right now. You don't have to say it out loud. I'll ask you this. This is almost like an invitation because it is. Invite, invite Jesus into your heart. Not here. It's not here. Because you know the most important thing that we have is our soul, our spirit, our mind. It's not our mind. It's, it's our heart. It's our heart. Invite Jesus to come into your heart this morning and, say, and, and, and ask him, and actually say, I want to trust you, Lord, because that's what it's about. We spoke about that all this morning. I want to trust you, Lord, and follow you, follow you as the Lord and Savior. Amen. Hey, if you just received the Lord Jesus into your heart, oh, God bless you. You'll be forever changed. You may not be like, who all of a sudden, they, no, but God knows. And he now will walk with you and lead you and guide you and give you a strength that you've never had before, that you maybe never even thought you could even grasp. But that's the power of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. And now you're, you're look, you're in a big family too. So God bless you. Amen. So as we end, I'll end here with Numbers chapter six. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I'll talk to you guys Wednesday night, Bible study, Revelation chapter 9. Read ahead. It'll be an awesome chapter. So I think we're going to Zoom it. You might get an invitation. Um, and if you don't get the invitation, we'll still put it up on YouTube. And I can't wait for Wednesday. I hope you have a great day.
Enjoy this day in Jesus. Amen. Amen.